Well, you know, we live in a military town, and we always have, the, have that saying that says, the noise you hear is the sound of freedom. Well, the noise I hear tonight is the sound of fellowship. <laughs> and and it's been, um, I've just been looking around the room, seeing how everyone is fellowshipping and talking uh, with one another, and that's exactly what we wanted to happen for the first few minutes as everybody came um, and was coming in. Anyway, so I have the privilege tonight of introducing our speaker. And, um, you know, my daughter, Grace Anna, she was four years old when we moved to Beaufort. And Carl, that's when he became the senior pastor of Community Bible Church, and that was July of 1990. Now, all these years later, here she is as our speaker. <laughs> it's a full circle kind of thing for me to be able to introduce my daughter. Um, the, the one thing that I can say is that she has a deep love for the Lord and a deep affection for his word. And I, as her mom, am so grateful for that. That's only something that God can do. And just this week, I was reading in some of the journals that I kept when my children were growing up. And on October 3rd, 1990, I simply wrote this sentence, Grace Anna trusted in Christ, with an exclamation point and then a smiley face next to it. And I didn't write any details about that. I wrote details about our day and other things that we did, but that was in all caps. And of course, a few years later, when she was eight, she wanted to clarify, make sure she really understood, and she did. Well, she's had a heart for God and for his word all these years, for as long as I can remember. And she's often challenged me in this way. And it was earlier this particular summer when she did an event for the women of her church, and I was so encouraged by what she was doing that I wanted her to come here and do the same thing for us at Community Bible Church. And so she added me to their Bible reading plan, and you're going to hear all about this tonight. Um, but she added me to their Bible reading plan, and it I just can't tell you. I mean, I love God's Word. But... Um, you know, it was a wonderful thing for me this summer to do that, to do this particular thing. Um, and I was sad when it ended two days ago on August 31st, because I went on September 1st to load it up and listen to it, because that's what I do first thing in the morning. I was like, oh, where is it? <laughs> anyway, but I want to share an excerpt before she comes up of a letter she sent to the women of her church, Capital Community Church in Raleigh. And she would write them periodically to share some encouraging things and, and to encourage them to keep up with this reading plan. She said, my mom and I were talking over the phone last week, and she was sharing with me how much she loves the routine of same-page summer, how on Sunday she misses the readings, and you'll understand what that means a little later. What she shared with me was so encouraging to, to me that I asked her to jot down some of it so I could share it with you. And then she said, let's be women who keep encouraging one another to never give up, give up the routine of being in the Word each and every day. And this is what I shared with her. One of the things I love about technology is being able to listen to the Bible even when I'm working in my home. To be able to hear God's Word read to me when I have to move from my desk to the tasks of the day is such a gift. Psalm 1 tells us that the person who is blessed is the one who meditates on God's word day and night. I love having my time with the Lord when I sit down and copy scripture and read and study his word with pen in hand. But technology allows me to be able to continue on through, throughout the day, being able to pop in my AirPods and do my normal daily routines, whether it's yard work, laundry, really anything, I can continue hearing God's word and it's constantly on my mind and coming into my ears. And I love how hearing the word read to me every single day, all throughout the day, keeps me focused. And when, your heart, and, and when you hear it in this way, you're not led astray. Your mind is stayed on the Lord and God keeps you in perfect peace no matter what else I'm hearing in the world. You know, Psalm 1 also says that the person who is blessed does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. God's telling us that we're not only defined by what we do positively, but we're also defined by what we don't do 
negatively. If all we're doing is listening to the messages of the world, we will be led astray. And before long, we will be walking in the path of sinners and we'll be sitting in the seat of scoffers. And I think about women sometimes who say, I keep the TV or radio on because they keep me company. I'm not always sitting down and watching or really paying any attention to it. However, most of what is on the television or movies or secular radio or on the news is the counsel of the wicked. We can call it what we want. Wicked in the sense that these people do not know God. And when we are taking in their advice, their counsel, what they say, we end up meditating on things that are directly opposed to God. And we don't even know it. But having God's word, his actual word going through our minds, his ways become who we are and what we meditate upon. So when my daughter invited me to be a part of that of same page summer, I jumped on it. and It's been so encouraging and refreshing. So the question becomes, do we as God's women really want to know the word of God? Not just what other people say about the word of God, but what he actually says. We take time for listening to and watching all kinds of other things. We make time for what we really want to do. We do. So the question becomes, do we really want to know the word of God? Again, not just what other people say about it. See, if those other people are not meditating on the word of God day and night, they will be led astray. And they can be telling us things that are inaccurate and incompatible with the word of God. But the actual word of God will not lead us astray. His word keeps us firmly planted by streams of water. Pray, Santa. Well, when my mom told me that there were 200 women register for this event. At first I thought, oh my goodness, that's going to make me nervous. And then I thought, oh my goodness, wow. How awesome that over 200 women are so eager to go to an event that's called Read Your Bible and want to dig into the Word of God. And it just shows you how no matter what's going on in the world, that there are Christian women who are eager to learn and know the Word of God. And I'm excited for tonight just to encourage you as I have been encouraged. And even as my mom was just reading that email, um, she always encourages me. And that email that I asked her to write up was because we had had a phone conversation. And I was even that day feeling a little bit discouraged for whatever reason about Bible reading. And mom just started telling me how encouraged she was in the Word. And I said, please write that up because I'm going to include it in my email to my women. But we do have that. God has given us that power to encourage one another. And so I hope that tonight this is an encouragement. So the event is called Read Your Bible. And what I really want to share tonight is my own journey of reading the Bible. And reading God's word has transformed my life. I've seen it transform the lives of women around me. And I know, without a doubt, that it will transform your life. Because the Word of God isn't like any other book. It is living. It is not just what God has spoken in the past. It is what He is speaking to you now. And that is why I can stand up here so confidently and encourage you to read this book. You know, since I came to know Christ as a child... And I didn't actually know that date, Mom. So now this will be my first October being able to celebrate that date. Um, but I've always read the Word of God. I mean, my parents, as you know, being in this church, have just instilled a love for the Word of God to me. And I've known my entire life that reading the, about the Bible was essential to spiritual growth. But I've often struggled with reading my entire Bible. In college, I was in the Word almost every single day, reading Proverbs or studying a book of the Bible, and this was so immensely helpful for my own spiritual growth. I still struggled a lot with, with knowing how the Bible completely fit together, and there were certain books that I had never read all the way through. I do remember one weekend in college, I decided that I was going to read the book of Isaiah in one day. And so... 
I sat down on a porch swing and started reading. After about 45 minutes, I started flipping ahead and realized I was going to be in that swing a long time. And I am very determined, so I tried really hard. But eventually, of course, I gave up. But that journey of trying and giving up was one I began to experience often as I tried to read through the whole Bible. Once I was married, I started using a one-year Bible reading plan, and I would start in January with hopeful resolutions and usually get four or five books into the Bible, and life would just happen. I'd oversleep. I would miss a day. I would get bogged down with trying to understand something, and then I would fall so far behind, I would just throw in the towel and figure I would try again next year. And I would keep reading my Bible, but I stopped trying to read it all the way through. And in addition to that, I experienced a lot of guilt and feelings of failure. Why couldn't I do this simple thing? So about four years ago, I decided that I was going to stop worrying about falling behind, but I was just going to keep reading and working through my McShane Bible reading plan no matter what. I was not going to worry about falling behind, but I would just keep reading. And that was the first step of me successfully reading through my entire Bible where I could say I started at Genesis and I went all the way through and I finished in Revelation and I did it, you know, in a certain amount of time. And my daily habit, habit of reading multiple chapters a day of scripture began to grow. And even it, though it took me more than a year, I finished reading. There was no fanfare when I finished. No one knew, though I did show my tattered checkmark plan to Grant. But it was a start for me of realizing I could do this. I could do it with young children. I could do it in the midst of my ordinary life. So I did it the next year, and I was still reading all on my own, but I moved faster this time. And as I was wrapping up that time in the Word, a friend texted me and asked if I would switch from McShane to read a different plan with her. And that's the one that we're going to talk, to talk about tonight and the one that I'm currently using. So we began doing that plan together. And I was used to reading four chapters a day, but this was now six chapters a day. So most days I couldn't fit all of my reading in in one sitting. And so when I couldn't finish all the reading at once, I began listening to the Word. I discovered that I loved hearing the Word of God read aloud. I loved it running through my mind while I was washing dishes or doing laundry or driving in the car. And because it was my third year of reading through the Bible in a year, I was recognizing so many themes and passages even in the tucked away books that I had neglected before. I was seeing, as Dad always says, that Scripture interprets Scripture and beginning to understand how the Bible fits together. In addition, my friend and I texted and checked in with each other just to share what the Holy Spirit was teaching us through his word. And having another woman in my life say, pray for me, I haven't been in the word today, was a catalyst for helping me make the word a daily priority. On days I was up in the middle of the night with a baby and too tired to get up early, I listened while I made breakfast for the kids. I began to incorporate the word into my daily life and literally feed on it, and I stopped worrying so much about what that time looked like. I was being so radically transform transformed by it, I didn't care. I started listening to sermons in the afternoons on passages I didn't understand or doctrinal truths I wanted to learn more about. All of this was happening during our first year at our new church. I was a brand new pastor's wife and trying to navigate what I felt were my responsibilities in that role. And it was during COVID when the world seemed to be so unstable, but I had a stability each and every day. And when I finished that year using this plan, I knew I had to invite more women into what I was doing. I've often struggled with knowing how to disciple other women. How do I give my husband, my children, and my home the time they need and pour my life into other women? And I realized that I could just invite them into what I was already doing. I could invite them into my own spiritual growth. 
I could serve alongside them in our church. I could have a Titus 2 type of ministry by doing together the most vital aspect of our Christian life, feeding, memorizing, and meditating on the Word of God. So in summer of 2021, I stepped out of my comfort zone and I texted women that God brought to my mind and asked them if they already had a Bible reading plan, and if not, if they wanted to join me in reading through the Bible that school year. I texted about 30 women, almost all women in my church. Some said no, but about half said yes. So in September of last year, we started reading the word together. We sent passages of scripture to one another during the week that ministered to us. We commented on the app, which I'll share more about later. We encouraged one another with the exhortations from the plan to jump in on the current day's reading when we fell behind. And we shared all the crazy ways and places we were reading the word. We all listened daily to passages of scripture. We texted one another after church about passages of scripture that were just taught that we had, that had just been in our reading. And we shared prayer requests. And I remember particularly one Sunday evening, it was during right after COVID when things were still kind of weird. And it was one Sunday evening at church and I looked around and all the the faces of the younger women that were there who were serving were the ones reading through the Bible together. And I could just see that the word was sustaining us. It was helping us be obedient and joyful servants that the word was at work in our lives. And when we finished the plan in May, you know, there wasn't fanfare. There was nothing special that happened. We were just all hungry for more, and we wanted to read more, so we kept reading. So as my mom mentioned, this summer, almost 100 of us just finished reading the New Testament together, and some of us will continue in the fall. No one has to join, but anyone who wants to can, and it doesn't mean that every woman will always want to read the Bible with this plan or in this way, but I can tell you that it has... I believe it's given our women an insatiable desire for the word and help them build daily habits of being in the word. And it has helped show us how essential the word of God is to our daily lives. How often we don't get in the word because we have simply overcomplicated it. And the importance of encouraging one another to be women in the word. So... With the rest of our time, I just want to expound on several things that I think will be vital and important for you as you read your Bible this year. And these are the things that have been so helpful for me, Um, just things that I've learned. And there were so many things that I could have shared, but the Lord just put these, these things on my heart, so I'm going to share those. And the first one is to read your Bible consistently. Read your Bible consistently. You know, just as physical food nourishes and sustains your body each day, so the Word of God sustains your soul spiritually. You can't eat ahead and then starve yourself, though I'm sure like you could do that to an extent, but it would be pretty miserable. Our bodies function best on daily nourishment, and so our souls need daily food. You know, so many women are walking around spiritually thirsty, hungry, and simply malnourished. And they wonder why they are so depressed, so negative, and often being caught up in the world's ideologies. You know, Jesus said during his temptation by the devil in Matthew 4, 4, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Psalm 81, 10 says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. And Psalm 119, which is just an incredible psalm on love for the word, says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Repeatedly, scripture encourages, encourages us to be satisfied in Christ alone and to go to him for our daily strength. A woman who goes to the word daily is a woman who is saying by her actions that she needs the Lord. The world says girl power. The word says God's immeasurable power toward us who believe. 
The world says, you've got this. The word says, he who calls you is faithful. He will do it. The world says, look inside yourself and find your truth. The word says, lift your eyes to the hills. From thence does your help come. Another importance of being in the word daily is the recognition that becoming a godly woman is a process. Your reading today isn't just about what you need right now, though I absolutely promise you that it is what you need right now. But being a woman who is consistently in the word is about the woman that you are becoming tomorrow. You know, I've often heard my mom say that you don't just wake up one day a godly older woman. And that is so true. Building godly habits, reading the word each day, even when you don't feel like it, even when you don't know how it's benefiting you, it's a step of obedience for the woman you desire to keep becoming. Proverbs 31, 25 says, Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she smiles at the future. Reading the word consistently shows your trust that God will complete this good work in you that he is already doing. Secondly, I want to encourage you to read your Bible completely. A.W. Tozer said, nothing less than a whole Bible can make a whole Christian. The Bible is a library of books, all inspired by God. Each of the 66 books have a theme, and they are written for a different reason. These books contain everything about God we need to know and everything about ourselves we need to know. And we need them all. We need the book of Genesis to understand man's beginning. We need Exodus to understand the law of God and how he gave it to Israel. We need First and Second Samuel to know how the kingdom of Israel started. We need Song of Solomon to understand the church, but also the relationship between a husband and wife. We need Romans because it's a summary of the Christian gospel. We need each of the four gospels because each one highlights a dis different aspect of Christ. Proverbs is all the wisdom we need. Psalms is our prayer book and hymn book. Acts is the story of the church, and I could go on and on. So we not only need to read every book for our Christian living, but Paul says in Romans 12, 2, that we need the word of God to help us think rightly. Romans 12, 2, that verse that many of us know so well says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. This word transformed is metamorphic. It is the picture of being completely renewed and flooded with the word of God. We need to intake a lot of scripture to counteract the world. Social, social media, Netflix, and news are constantly speaking to us. But we need to make sure that we have more of the word going into us than the world. And if you're going to do that, it must be more than 15 minutes a day of your daily bread devotional. So many women have settled for a short Bible verse or two each day and then reading what someone else has written about it. They are living off rations instead of partaking of the feast God has given us. Why settle for a few strained out trips when you can go to the fountain? We have the wellspring of life available to us. Let us drink it. And when you have the word of God constantly going through your heart and mind, you will begin to be transformed. Third, and I totally pulled a dad here and pulled a C word <laughs> to make it match. But I said, read your Bible cacophonously. So don't only read your Bible to yourself quietly. Read your Bible out loud. Listen to it. Welcome the word of God into your no noisy and normal life. This yearly plan I'm using encourages Bible listening, not only Bible reading, and that has been immensely helpful for me. 
You know, for centuries, Christians only ever heard the word of God read to them. There is a certain cadence and beauty hearing the word of God read aloud. You cannot skip over verses with your eyes or automatically go to your underlying portions each time. You cannot as easily close your ears as you can close your eyes. And all throughout scripture, we are commanded to hear the word of God. In Nehemiah chapter 8, we read how Ezra read the law of God to all the people. Nehemiah 8, 3 says, Then he read it in the open square that was in front of the water gate from morning until midday, before the men and women and those who could understand, and all the people were attentive to the book of the law. Romans 10, 17, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing the word of God. John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. John 8, 47, he who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. This theme of hearing the word of God is all throughout scripture. It's everywhere. It's a great privilege that in our day we can read and study our Bibles. But let us not forget that so it is to be able to hear the word. I also encourage at times reading the word out loud. Reading it out loud helps you think about the word and meditate upon it. You know, this past week I was reading Psalm 147 on my own and I read it quietly to myself and then my kids came in so I said, hey, I'm going to read Psalm 147 out loud. And so I read it aloud to the kids, and when I was reading aloud, I got to verse 8 where it says, He makes grass to grow on the mountains. And when I said that, that verse just hit my heart in a completely different way. I had just skimmed over it when I read it to myself. But now we stopped and we talked about what does that verse mean? He makes grass to grow in the places that nobody sees. He's sustaining the world in ways we do not even understand. So much to learn about God's character just in that verse. And so much to apply too, right? What are we doing that no one sees? How are we obeying God in the areas that nobody knows about? So reading the word aloud also as well has a special way of working its way into our hearts. And of course, I could also talk about Bible memory here, which mom is so awesome about encouraging here at CBC. But it's a way to really submit the word of God in our minds. So I'm encouraging you to read your Bible, but to hear your Bible and to read your Bible out loud. Fill your mind with it in a variety of ways. Lastly, and in in many ways, this is the most important point that I'm going to talk about tonight, is read your Bible in church community. So we know this, right? It's not enough just to be a Christian all by yourself every day reading your Bible. This was what was so damaging during COVID. So many Christians were isolated. And my husband counseled so many Christians who were depressed. And he would say, when was the last time you were at church? So it's not enough just to be reading your Bible alone somewhere. We must be plugged into the Bible teaching of a solid church because the church is a vital tool that the Holy Spirit uses to encourage you in your spiritual walk and awaken your Bible reading. Hebrews 10 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. I love Psalm 73 and if you have your Bible you can turn there really quickly because Psalm 73 um, gives us a powerful example of the church body in the life of a Christian so Psalm 73 and I'm going to read the first 12 verses to start off Surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet came close to stumbling. My steps had almost slipped. For I was envious of the arrogant, as I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no pains in their death, and their body is fat. 
They are not in trouble as other men, nor are they plagued like mankind. Therefore, pride is their necklace. The garment of violence covers them. Their eye bulges from fatness. The imaginations of their heart run riot. They mock and wickedly speak of oppression. They speak from on high. They have set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue parades through the earth. Therefore, his people return to this place. The waters of abundance are drunk by them. And they say, how does God know? And is there knowledge with the Most High? So what we're reading in these first 12 verses is the psalmist sees the wicked and all he sees is prosperity. Why do the ungodly prosper and seem at ease? And yet he is living for the Lord and his life is difficult. He says in 13, verse 13, Surely in vain I have kept my heart pure and washed my hands in innocence, for I have been stricken all day long and chastened every morning. If I had said I will speak thus, behold, I should have betrayed the generation of thy children. These doubts that he has about his faith go deep. In his own personal contemplation, he is plagued with anxiety and doubts. And he's worried, as we see here in verse 15, that if he speaks his thoughts aloud, that it would cause shame to God's people. But look what happens in verse 16. When I pondered to understand this, it was troublesome in my sight until I came into the sanctuary of God. Then I perceived their end. Surely thou dost set them in slippery places, thou dost cast them down to destruction. How they are destroyed in a moment, they are utterly swept away by sudden terrors. Like a dream when one awakes, O Lord, when aroused, thou wilt despise their form. And he goes on. On his own, his problems are not solved. But when he comes into the sanctuary of God, and when he's around God's people, it all makes sense. How many times has this been true for you? You are downtrodden. You are discouraged. You are maybe even doubting. Then you come to church, and you see God's people worshiping. You see them believing God's promises. Someone speaks an encouraging word into your life. You hear the word of God faithfully preached. And your soul is completely recalibrated. You are uplifted. And you head into a new week full of hope. That is what the body of Christ is supposed to be for your soul. We need one another. You can head into a new week of reading the word on your own. Because you've been filled with up. And not just that, the word of God when faithfully taught helps you understand how to read your Bible. It's the greatest Bible study you will ever be a part of. Part of. So often the very passage I had questions about in the previous week is explained at church on Sunday. You know, earlier I talked about how we need a lot of scripture in our lives to counteract the, wor the world. And this applies to us being in the local church as well. Having the word spoken to you consistently outside of yourself two to three times a week in a solid Bible teaching church is a vital element to your spiritual growth. And if you're in a solid church like this one, you will hear the word of God usually taught twice on a Sunday, maybe in a Sunday school or the, the service, and then maybe another time during the week in a discipleship ministry. And also, as I mentioned before, the word of God is the basis of your discipleship for, with other women. So often I have women tell me, I just, I want to disciple other women, but I don't know how. I don't feel like I have anything to offer. Actually, you do. It's right here. And it was such a freeing th thing for me to realize that that's all I needed to encourage another woman. So read together with another woman, sit under the same teaching week in and week out. 
And what we were doing tonight, you know, coming together and encouraging one another to be women who love this book, this is what our hearts continually need. We're never going to outgrow that. I want to end with, with Psalm 16, 8 and this beautiful promise. It's, I love this psalm so much. When we moved into our other house, our other rental house, Grant wrote it on the whiteboard that was hanging in the kitchen. This is a wonderful passage of scripture or verse to memorize. And it says, I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. And that's what we so desire to do as Christian women, right? We're going to just keep putting in front of us. We don't always know if we're doing it the right way. We don't always understand what we're doing. We don't sometimes even know what it means. But we're putting it before us because it is the word of God. And we know that when he is at our right hand, we will not be shaken. The great preacher Martin Lloyd-Jones, when preaching on this passage, said this. The secret of the saints in the past was that they read the word themselves and prayed and meditated and read good books. Not snippets, not mere devotional commentaries. They got down to the doctrine, to the depths, and they lived in these depths and not merely in the shallows. And the result was their glorious lives. Let us be women like that, who set the Lord always before us. We're not content to wade in the shallows. We want to go deep. And because of that, we are not shaken. Let me pray for us. Dear Heavenly Father, we know that it is only because of a relationship with you and that you have saved us that we even desire to be in your word, that we even long for it. And so I do pray if there is any woman here tonight who is just sitting here thinking, I don't have a passion like that, that she would come to you in humility and childlike faith and ask you to save her, Lord, and I just pray that um, we would all be women who are just utterly dependent upon you. Lord, I pray specifically for the women in the, this room that you would knit them together through the reading of your word. I pray that they would be able to encourage one another this year in their Bible reading. Lord, for some who maybe are struggling to build that habit of daily being in the word, that this plan would encourage them to let go of doing everything perfectly and to just come and lord i pray that the older women in this room would be encouraged to keep on reading the word and keep on being faithful and keep on pouring out um, to the women who are here lord and i just pray that um and i know that your word will continue to build us up lord we're so so thankful that you have saved us and given us this hope. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, um, we are going to go with the, uh, I guess I'll set that down. Um, the first thing that Grace Ann is going to explain, and it's interesting because I went through the questions briefly and saw that every, because most of the women want to know, explain the app, how does it work, how does the plan work, <laughs> and uh, which is so good because that's, that's what I, Grace Ann said, now when we first get up there, ask how the plan works. <laughs> well, I told her, I said, the first question you need to ask me is, <laughs> that's right, how do you and do the plan? That's right, that's right. And so Grace Ann is going to explain that, and then we'll get to some of the other questions. So it's actually really simple. First, at this table right back here, you can grab a paper plan. So you can grab that on your way out. But if you want to do this particular plan this year with the women of CBC, there's a card on your table that you just fill out with your name and your email and you drop it in the box over there. 
and Claudia, with her amazing admin skills, is going to send out an email to all the women who sign up. So if you're online, there's probably, there may not be a sign up yet online, but oh, for, the for somebody who's watching, who's not here at, you know, who goes to CBC. Um, but put your email in the basket and my mom and Claudia will send out an email and it will have the link to the plan, the, the app, with the instructions on how to download the app. And the app is just YouVersion Bible app. Probably a lot of you have it on your phone. There's a lot of crazy stuff on there. But, so just know that. You know, there's videos on there of people that probably aren't saying good things. But we just use it as a tool where the plan is in there. So when my mom sends out the link, or Claudia, you'll click on that link, and you just have that app downloaded, and it'll go directly to that plan. And in that plan, you'll see all the CBC women who are reading together up at the top, and it will just list the day's reading. So it starts, this plan actually starts on Monday, September 5th. So when you open up the app on Monday, September 5th, it'll list the day's reading. And, and don't get overwhelmed when you see the six to seven chapters, because I really want you to think about, and this is what the plan encourages, that you don't have to do all that at once, okay? And if you don't get to it all that day, that's okay too. But how encouraging to have a lot of the word before you that you can incorporate into your day. So I typically try to do a lot of it in the morning before my kids get up. That's my ideal scenario. <laughs> but as you know, that so often doesn't happen. Um, so I'll go about my day listening to it. Um, so that is kind of how to do it. So basically the big thing you need to do, do is put your email on that card, drop it in the basket. Um, and then some of you I know may think, well, I don't want to use an app. And that's okay too. I think the app is fantastic because you can listen to the word through the app. But if you just want to use the paper plan, you know you're still on the same page with CBC Women. Um, and it gives you a springboard of things to talk about. And at the end of each day, there's a section that says talk it over. And it just says, what is one thing that the Lord has, you know, you know, taught you today? And I just encourage my women as often as they can just to share something from the word that has impacted them as an encouragement to other women. You know, and I, I, want, I want to add something to that because when she made the comment about, you see that there's all these chapters for this particular day. One of the things that I found so helpful this summer, and, I, and again, it's, it's one of the things that I love about technology, is it might be a lot of reading, but if you listen to it, I mean, you listen to other things. We all listen to things, and you put it, it's not even, because you can sometimes think, oh, this is overwhelming if I'm sitting down and I'm, I'm going to read 10 chapters or whatever. But it's not 10, but. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I but if you, if I she read probably reads ten, <laughs> what did you say? Seven. It is it is six chapters a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, it seems like a lot, and some of those chapters are really long. Like we mm -hmm. had Psalm 119, you know, this yeah. what, two weeks ago or something, mm -hmm. or last week, um, and it's really long. But that's what's so great about listening. And you know, this summer my son got married, and um, you know, we were in California, and you know, I'm sharing a hotel room with my husband, like you normally would <laughs> but I woke but I I woke up I would wake up really early well I don't want to wake him up but how great is it to put my airpods in and the first thing and now this is just a habit I'll put those in and start listening to it immediately even before my feet hit the floor you're not waking anybody up and you're having God's word right there. And um, I just remember that being great. And then when I did get up, I would still have it in there. I would go like, go into the uh, bathroom and start putting my makeup on. And I'm still listening mm -hmm. to it. So that's what's so great about this particular thing that I found very helpful. Um, anything else you want to say about that? Oh, I just think that's great. I think it's just a perspective mm -hmm. shift. Of yeah. Your yeah. time in the word doesn't have even if you got your Bible reading done perfectly in that time, every chapter you wanted, I think our prayer should be, Lord, if let me read more today. Let me know your word more today. And so I, for me personally, this app has helped me actually put feet to that. 
Okay, um, okay I, I want, I'm gonna go ahead and read this question. Explain this app on busy days. How do you plug in the portion of scripture you are on? Does the app go straight through or does it have a portion here and a portion there? I think it pretty much. It goes straight through. So when you click on it and you can actually at the top, if you want to change the translation, you can. So if you want to listen to it in the KJV or the NASB, you can switch that. And then it'll just run through um, playing the scriptures. And uh, yeah, busy days. I feel like most days are busy. So it's it's helpful. Okay. Um, we I, Pretty much, again, because y'all were curious about this particular program, and I think we've answered that. But here's another question. What podcast do you recommend to listen to for listening to the Bible? Now, I guess we would still... You would use it, it on the app. Yeah. Though the, I'm sure there's probably other... I mean, you can go on Audible and download Johnny Cash reading the New Testament. So <laughs> there are other, like, this app is not the only app right, to right, listen right. to the Bible, which I actually did one summer, and it was really, <laughs> I really liked it. But um, there's, there's others, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm looking for a new study Bible. Do you recommend any? Oh, that's a good, that's a great question. I do think that every Christian should have a study Bible if they can. It's an awesome tool. I mean, one thing I, I think is important is not getting too bogged down and always feeling like you have to study everything. If I studied everything, and this is what got me bogged down so much before my daily Bible reading, because I'd read one sentence and then I would want to study, because it's so rich. And I just wanted to unpack that. But what I found what helped me even more is to move through the scriptures because then that is unpacking and it's building on it on itself. That being said, though, a study Bible is a basic level Christian tool you can have. So um, several that we have are I love my MacArthur study Bible. Mm -hmm. um, there's a Reformation study Bible, the ESV study Bible, any study Bible you have, you know, you know, it's a person writing those notes. So it's mm -hmm. not just read that with discernment and wisdom. Most of them are very wise people, so you can rely on them, but, you know, there may be something you disagree with. Um, something that's been really helpful, and I should have brought it tonight, but it's called the Family Worship Bible Guide by Joel Beakey. And it mm -hmm. is fantastic because it covers every chapter of Scripture, and it just has a couple thoughts on each chapter and a couple reflection questions. And so... It's written, actually, for dads to use in family devotions. I use it for my personal devotions, and then I just pull it in when I'm, you know, doing stuff with the kids, um, and I'll open it up. But that's also a great tool as well, the Family Worship Bible Guide. Okay. Um, what should I do when someone asks me a question about God that I don't understand? So yeah, I guess I don't know. <laughs> well, I know, don't know. I don't know yet. I mean, I, I, that's what I love about reading the word and growing is that I can find the answers typically. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, just saying I don't know, but I want to know, let's figure this out together. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, you know, Grace Ann and I were actually we were kind of talking about this um, earlier in the week. I don't remember what spurred it, but we were talking about that it's okay to say you don't know. You know, lots of times. Well, we I think, think I said to you, if someone asks me a question, I don't know. I'm just going to say I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's true, like whether it's a child or whether it's a grown-up or whether it's someone and you think, oh, I should know the answer to that question. Sometimes I've said that I should know the answer to that question. I'm kind of embarrassed that I don't know. It's okay to say those kinds of things. And, and the, But another thing is to say, you know what, the more we um, read, our, read the Word, the more we're into it, we ask God to give us wisdom, He will. You know, it's like oftentimes when we're studying the Bible, we're reading a passage and we don't understand it. And I'm not talking about where we can get on the phone and call the Bible line. Because, by the way, <laughs> commercial here, we have a wonderful resource right here in, at the Community Bible Church. And it's every Tuesday at 11 o'clock. And 
Or you me, know. I can just call anytime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But seriously, I've encouraged women off, you know, for years, if, when their questions, when their children ask them questions that they don't understand, make that, like, we're going to call the Bible line on Tuesdays and ask the question because, you know, I'm still, I've been married to Carl for 42 years now, and I'm still amazed at how he's like a walking Bible man. I mean, he just is. You know, I'll just say, like, something I'll say, you know, well, you know where it says something that says, uh, Blah, 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 blah. Well, I mean, we used to play this game on road trips. It was Stump Dad, and we'd have our Bibles and pull out a verse, and he would have to figure out where it was in the chapter in the verse. <laughs> and he would sometimes say, you know, I'm not sure if that's the third chapter or the fourth chapter, but I know it's the 13th verse. <laughs> but, you know, one thing I'd, I'd say about that, too, is, I think a lot of women, I see a lot of comments and questions that women write about the word, and they act like they are over the word. That they are, well, why does the Bible say this? And I think that's what's so important mm. as godly women is we're underneath it. We are willing to obey it. We believe it's true. And so I think any question that you come with, which when you read through the whole Bible, you're going to have a lot because it's, it's so deep and it's so, there are so many passages, you know, where things are happening and you're thinking, how does that fit? But I do think if you have a humble heart mm -hmm. and a heart of submission, like Mary, who said, be it done to me according to your word, that that, it makes all the difference in terms of, of your Bible reading. And then the more that you're reading and you have that humble heart, your questions, like I said in my talk, are just so often answered quite quickly, you know, as well. Well, I'm glad um, that Grace Anna said that because we are living in days where people, and it's not just women, but where people are just saying, questioning the Word of God mm -hmm. constantly, and they're questioning it because there's an issue with them, and so they don't want it to be true, and so therefore... Um, they're embarrassed by it, or they don't want to place themselves under the authority of God, so it must not say that. Okay, it says that, but it must not mean that. Or, okay, it says that, and, and it meant that, but it doesn't mean it now. It meant it then. And, then. and they're jumping through all these hoops to make the Bible less than it is. And, you know, we really do need to be um, women who... Um, not just believe the Bible, but we do place ourselves underneath its authority and realize, let the, let the Word of God convict us, um, and that we're saying, yeah, the Word of God says this, and I don't like it, but God says this through His Word, and so, Lord, I want, just like Grace Anna mentioned, Mary saying, be it done to me according to your Word, your Word, I want to know what your Word says, and I want to run quickly to obey. You know how when you're raising your children, you want them to quickly obey you? You know, quickly you know, don't lollygag and say, well, she didn't really mean pick up my toys. She, you know, but that's what we do with the Lord, and he wants us to run quickly to obey him, and that's what I want in my life, and so mm. it's it's so important, and, and even like, um, you know, hearing it, when Grace Anna was saying earlier, just hearing it in your mind, I mean, it's just like, you know, we always say, oh, I just want God to speak to me, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but you're hearing it in his in your ears and he is speaking mm -hmm. he speaks through his word it, and it's when you and, and you say well i want him to speak out loud well when you listen to it he's speaking out loud and it's not like some crazy message he's giving some woman who says yeah god told me to do this no his word is what speaks to us and that's why this is so important so um let's see i'm not sure i quite understand this question um, if you feel like you're hurting too much mm. for the Lord, what should you do? Mm. I, I don't know if that means if you're, um, you want to take a stab at that? I mean, I, I think <laughs> that's a great question. It is. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, it just makes me think about Psalm 73 that we read tonight because we know that for each one of us, there are going to be times like that. There are going to be times where we are hurting so much. 
and you know we don't even maybe want to believe the word of God and I think that is where the body of Christ comes in and you just show up Mm -hmm. you know you can't maybe that's the only thing you can do is you show up at church and you just walk through the doors and you sit there and you just let the word minister to you and um that's that's what immediately comes to my mind Mm -hmm. just from that psalm Mm -hmm. you know and um the psalms are great for the hurting heart all throughout the psalms and you know this is um i guess a good place because i know we're almost out of time but this is a good place to those of you if you're not planning to come to woman's life i hope you will come um, every um, Wednesday in September and then the Monday nights following. And we're going to be studying some um, chapters in the Psalms. And I know I mentioned Psalm 1 um, when I was introducing Grace Anna, and that's the first one we're going to do on Wednesday. And y'all, I have taught this Psalm for years. I- I've taught, when I say taught it, I mean taught children to memorize it. And I've memorized it. And it's like, I don't know, maybe like, I don't know, I told the children last night, or Wednesday night at church, I don't know, it's like my signature psalm, I think I use that word, they're probably like, what is she even talking about? (laughs) But y'all, I cannot tell you how much this psalm has meant to me, because this will be the first time I've taught it verse by verse, every word, every verse, walking through it, and we're going to do that on Wednesday. And there's so much from that psalm, even in terms of what we've talked about a little bit tonight, in terms of, you know, how blessed is man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. I love those first three verses because it's it's negative what she doesn't do. And we're going to look at that in depth on Wednesday, and then we're going to look at what she actually does do and what's profitable about that. And then we're going to look at that contrast of um, the wicked and what they are like. And, you know, all throughout God's word, it's like two ways. It's two ways. You know, there's, I mean, there's, when I say two ways, I'm talking about, we looked at it in Proverbs, you know, last uh, February in terms of the wise and the foolish. You know, there's the broad gate, there's a narrow gate. There's, you know, there's the Lord. I mean, there's heaven and there's hell. I mean, there's two. There's not a third way. And we're going to look at, at Psalm 1, and you see it all over Scripture, because there's the way of the wicked, and there's the way of the righteous. And that's what we're going to look at, and I hope that God will use it tremendously in our lives. And then as we continue on, this whole year, we're going to look at the Psalms. And one of the Psalms we'll be looking at later on deals with pain and how much we hurt and how the psalmist cried out to the Lord. But we're also going to be looking at psalms that deal with the greatness of God. And when we're, we're so amazed at his greatness, then we think, well, who am I? You know, and, and, and because we live in a day where we're like, I'm so great. And it's like, no, God is great. I love the contrast that Grace Anna even had when she was sharing tonight in terms of the contrast of like, you know, girl power. But no, the power of God. And that's what we see all throughout Scripture. And we're going to learn a lot in the Psalms this year. And so I hope that you will make it a point to come. And the other thing, those of you who have children in, in, your, in your choir who are memorizing these Psalms, then you're going to have meat to put on the bone as you are helping them memorize it. You can memorize it with them. And then not only will you memorize it, but you will understand it. And, um, and so may God give us grace um, to do that together. So... Do you want to say anything? Yeah, I was just thinking about how you've always taught, you know, Psalm 1. And when you were sharing that, I was thinking how I'm sure as you were preparing your talk, there were probably new things that ministered to you. And just how the Word of God is like that. I'm sure there are women in this room who probably read through the Bible multiple, multiple times. And it's just, they're ne- you're never going to exhaust it. You're never going to be, okay, Psalm 1, got it. I'm done figuring that one out. It's no, it's, there's so much, it's living. And so it's exciting to think about even the passages that you know really well, that God wants to continue to use them in your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
which, it, which is so exciting. And I think most of these questions were actually about the app. Yeah, which I hope we covered. And so as they go out, you were going to, anything else you need to tell them about when you leave, you put your name, your email address, you'll get an email from when this plan is uploaded. Claudia and I will get that Yes, sent so out. just make sure to. Um, if you want to be a part of yeah, it. Yeah, if you want to do it, you can grab a plan on your way out the door so you can kind of look over it. And yeah, the rest of these were about that. Um, yeah. Go ahead. And then make sure to sign up. Yeah, yeah. And then the other thing, I just want to reiterate, Grace Anna mentioned this earlier, but there are some crazy things on that app. Just go to the Word. Don't, you know, when you see a video of some questionable teacher, don't click on it. Okay? Just don't. I'll probably be writing, like, when I send emails out, I'll probably say, and y'all, don't be tempted to, cr to click on so-and-so. Just don't. Just go to the Word, okay? To the Word only. <laughs> All right, let me close this in prayer. Father, I thank you for every single woman that you've brought tonight. I thank you for all the ones who are watching online. I thank you for our campuses in Graniteville and Grays and that they joined us and other people who may be watching this and want to be a part of this um, uh, Bible reading plan. There's so many ways to, to hear the word, but the biggest thing is just get in the habit of not only reading it, but hearing it and, um, and making it a priority in our lives. Um, Father, there's just, you know, you, you say in your word that it has everything pertaining to life and godliness, that you have given us everything, and there's so much in your word that, that, um, that we don't know. We think we know, but we don't know. We'll never mine all of the riches that are contained in the word of God. Father, I'm so grateful that you've given us printed copies, that we have apps where we can listen to it that um, we have so many ways to get the word of God into our lives when centuries before people, as Grace Anna mentioned tonight, only heard it read to them or in countries and nations where it was prohibited and, and wanted to be kept from these people and they just poured over one page that they shared with each other because they could not have their own copies of the word of God. Father, we have so much in this nation, such an abundance, even with so many things around us that seem to be crumbling and, and, um, and that your word and Christians are mocked and scoffed at. Father, help us never to be ashamed of your gospel. Father, help us never to be ashamed of the blood that you shed for us. Father, help us not to be ashamed of your commandments, of what your word actually says, that we are not afraid of people who say, the Bible says that. Father, help us to stand on the truth and to not waver and not back down mm -hmm. in these days in which we live. Father, we know that it's your word that saves people, that you want to rescue the perishing, and they are perishing. You want to rescue them. You want to care for the dying. You want to snatch them in pity from sin in the grave, and you want to use us in the process. Father, for some reason, we felt as Christians that it's all going to be okay and that people aren't really going to an eternity without you. But we know your word teaches unless they come into a relationship with your son, Jesus Christ, they will be forever separated from you in a place called hell. So, Father, I pray that we would hold fast the faithful word, that we would be women who know it, who read it, who hear it, who listen to it, who heed it, who run quickly to your commandments to obey what you have said in your word. Father, we love you. It is the, um, you know, when we come to, in, in, when we understand the grace of God, when we understand the mercy that you've shown us, it makes us to be the kind of women who are zealous to obey you. So I, I pray that you would use this um, year in our lives from reading the Bible together, from being at Woman's Life, from for being here at church on Sunday mornings and in our adult Bible fellowships and all the ways that we would draw together as we see the day approaching that we would encourage one another while it is still today and that we would work for the gospel and for the kingdom while we can. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Y'all are dismissed. Y'all are dismissed.